Hi guys, I'm gonna try recording one more video on relatively simple tactics. I hope you like it. Enjoy. I actually don't know where it will take me because again, I'm gonna be using the chess.com tactics trainer <clears throat> and discussing what I see here. All right, okay, this one is not that difficult. There's unprotected bishop on f5. There's semi-protected knight on e5, which is once attacked, once defended. This bishop on d6 is undefended. And the king is within checking distance from the knight. All these factors combined contribute to bishop takes e5. Distracting the bishop from its duties, it was overloaded. Knight e7 check and knight f5 winning material. Next one, king to f2. Okay, this one is embarrassingly easy, knight g4. That was a check. Let's just skip this one. I don't know why they give those kind of things. Okay, the queen is unprotected on d4 and the king is exposed to check and there is alignment of heavy pieces. Queens are looking at one at another one. Bishop b5 check and takes d4 wins the game. Next one. Okay, again. The king is exposed to check on this diagonal. By the way, whenever the pawn from f7 has moved, the king is exposed. And what is really important here, undefended piece here and there. Well, in this case, queen on d7 being undefended is irrelevant, but bishop takes c4 check. Now we take the rook for free. Next one. Okay, what do we have here? What do we have here? Unprotected pawn on b4. If that matters, maybe if we take it, we can trap the knight. But what I see is like that king is really, really exposed to my pieces. The bishop is looking there. The queen is ready to go. Knight is ready to jump to g5. I feel like queen h6 should win, but I need a second. Queen h6, f6. Then I take semi-protected pawn, takes, check, and then rook joins. Yes, queen h6. Oh, f5. Okay. <clears throat> I was calculating f6. Unfortunately, I cannot make variations here. And I g5 should decide. And now takes on f7. Do I have anything better? Nope. Takes on f7. And then if king takes, I could take the pawn with the check and then move my bishop. Winning attack for white. Next one. Okay. This one is typical. The king is exposed to checks from here. The bishop on b5 is semi-protected. In this particular case, I'm not sure if that, that is relevant. So this is a typical combination. Queen h5. Knight takes g6. Sometimes queen takes g6 wins, but in this case king can run away, so we just take the rook. And we win exchange and the pawn, and the knight is under attack. Black is hopeless. Next one. Okay, this one is alignment of heavy pieces. Whenever the pawn from f7, as I just pointed out, moved, the king is exposed to checks. And especially if there's an alignment of heavy pieces, especially queen and king, or queen and rook, or two rooks, whatever, look out for your bishop. Maybe you can do, I think that's called a skewer. Takes, takes, white wins the full queen. Okay, this one is a typical way to win, is to... Well, if there was no pawn, sorry, if there was no pawn on c6, the winning could be like rook f1, rook takes a2, rook f2 check and takes. The problem is that if I move the rook to f1, c7, and I cannot stop that pawn, it would promote with a check. So in this case, I sacrifice the rook with a check, and then I promote with a check, and then I would surely stop this pawn uh, at least on c8 square, and I would eventually win this one. Okay, one more. What do we see here? <clears throat> okay, unprotected, unprotected, semi-protected, semi-protected. If I take the knight now, I lose my rook, right? If I take the knight, I lose my rook. First of all, you count the pieces, surely. We have the same number of pieces. Then you check what you can take for free. The knight on e5 is seemingly for free, but no, rook takes d8 and, and white wins. So uh, if I take the queen on c2, the knight is not hanging. So I'm going to take the rook here first, and then I'm going to take the knight here. Uh, there was another line. If queen takes my queen, I take rook on d1, and queen my queen was protected. It was crucial. Okay? Okay, this one is, uh, the rook on g1 is semi-protected, one attacker, one defender. There's a severe back rank problem. If white had a pawn on h3, the position would be 
well, if not equal, black would probably have to just take the pawn. But in this case, I can go rook e1 and there's nobody to protect the rook. There's just one check and I hide on h7. So rook e1, king h7 and queen has to sacrifice itself and black is winning. All right. All right, what do we have here? Count the pieces. White is one piece up. So actually, if we survive here, we would be winning. What else? Undefended rook here. Semi-protected pawn here. One attacker, one defender. I see alignment of heavy pieces. And I think I see a solution. Just takes the pawn. If queen takes, I pin the queen using the alignment. Knight takes e6. And now rook to e2. And I win the queen. All right. Oh, wow. What's going on here? Okay, count the pieces, same number of pieces, maybe we are, yes, we are one pawn down. What can we take for free? We can take the full queen. I think I should do that. My queen is hanging, right? So I think I would do this if I take the queen, they take my queen, and I take the bishop and I win the piece. That was not difficult and not really interesting. Oh, I like this kind of mates. Okay, so what do I see here? King has zero legal moves. Usually that's a huge sign of possible mate. It would be beautiful if knight to f2 would be a mate. We cannot distract the bishop, but we give a check on... If... Yeah, we give check. Usually if you see that kind of king, you consider checks. Knight f2 check, bishop f2, queen e4. Check, and then I take the queen, and then I would take the rook with mate to follow. Few more. Okay, this one is easy. Um, same number of pieces, right? What can I take for free? Nothing. Um, unprotected pieces. Bishop, semi pawn on b2. Yeah, not really important. Sometimes it's important, especially with this bishop. Okay, semi protected pawn on h2, if anyone cares. Knight on c3 is actually twice attacked and only once defended. But that is not the key thing. The queen is once attacked and once defended and I can text it, take the defender simultaneously protecting my queen, winning the full piece. Okay, this one is unprotected queen. King is exposed to checks. Alignment of pieces. Queen g1 check takes the queen. Sorry if that's too easy for you. I'm just trying to, to, to help you find relatively universal algorithm of finding relatively simple tactics. If you want to find out more, click the link below the video to learn more in my video course. All right. Unprotected rook, king is exposed to checks. That's all actually you need to know. We have just two forcing moves available and then you check forcing moves. Mo quiet moves don't win the tactical games, right? It's rookie one check. And now alignment appeared, rook d1 check and takes the rook. And probably last one. Okay. So what do I see here? Same number of pieces, right? Okay. Um, unprotected pieces, pawn on a7. Yeah, I'm not gonna get to it. Okay, what else? Semi-protected piece on h7, that's a good sign. You never know when this diagonal is going to open up and it will happen right now. Okay, the king is within checking distance of the knight. In this case, these two squares are heavily protected, but you never know when a discovered check is coming. So, and I also see that bishop on e5, usually bishops do not belong in the middle of the board. Usually knight does belong, the bishop does not. I'm thinking f4, bishop moves and I go e5, double attack on the bishop and on the pawn on h7. Yep, f4, okay, that's not interesting, come on. Do I have e5? Nah, it just takes a bishop. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you like it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, click the link below and tell your friends about my channel. Take care.